Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, I'm going to be doing a breakdown of my favorite player in the league and a Thunder legend, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Shea has continued to get better and better over the course of his five year career at this point, and he's on a trajectory that he's going to be one of the best players in the league when he's in his prime. I firmly believe that. I also believe that he can be a team's franchise player, as he is for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I believe that he's in for the best individual season of his career this upcoming year and I wanted to talk about it because I'm super super excited for what I think he's going to do this upcoming year. I think he could be an all-star. I think he's going to establish himself in many people's minds as one of the best young players in the league period, not even just amongst guards. And I think that he's going to make a lot of people who have doubted him over the past few seasons really realize how wrong they were. So let's go ahead and break down Shea's upcoming season. Leave a like and subscribe if you do enjoy. Let's see if we can hit 100 likes on this video. And also comment down below if there's any other players that you want to see me make a season preview of prior to the year. And maybe I'll pick a few and make a few videos. Starting off, let's talk about this past season for Shea. Shea averaged 24.5 points per game, which was a career high, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, and shot 45% from the field, 30% from 3, and 81% from the line. Now, the big number that probably pops out to you is the 30% from 3. He really struggled to shoot the 3 ball over the course of this past season. And there are a few reasons for that. The main one being the fact that Shea was coming off of plantar fasciitis and hadn't played basketball in 7 months prior to him starting the season. He hadn't done like an NBA run since March 22nd and the first game of the Thunder's year was on October 20th. It had been a full seven months. Plus, everyone in the NBA was making an adjustment over the course of that time. If you remember, there was all that weird stuff with the Wilson ball where, hell, even Damian Lillard couldn't shoot the ball properly. Also, adjusting to a different situation. The year prior, he had a guy like Al Horford who helped a ton with the playmaking, setting him up for easy opportunities, as well as some shooting at the center position. Also, fans were returning, and he slowly turned up over the course of the season. So while he did struggle to start the year, prior to the All-Star break, he shot 27.8% from three. After the All-Star break, he shot 39.3%. So he completely flipped that switch. And I believe that's more of the Shea we're going to see this upcoming season. He had some time prior to the All-Star break where he sat out for a couple of weeks and got his injury fully healthy. And he averaged 30 points per game, seven and a half assists, six rebounds, shot 54% from the field, 40% from three over those 13 games that he played after the All-Star break. So he played exceptionally well. And I think a lot of that is going to carry over into this upcoming season. There's a lot of reasons to be excited for this upcoming year, and it's not just his play post All-Star break, it's also when we look back at what he did in 2020 and 2021. Back in that season, he shot 42% from three and 51% from the field over the 35 games in that season that he played prior to getting that foot injury that we talked about prior that kept him out of the Olympics and pretty much out of all basketball competition for the better part of the offseason. And so now... When we look at the sample sizes of this past post All-Star break of him the season prior and the season this past year prior to the All-Star break, a lot of words there, we now have 48 games of Shea as the guy where he shot really, really well from three and 43 games where he kind of struggled, which included injury recovery. So it's clear that Shea is a lot more of that guy that can shoot than the guy that can't shoot. So I'm not super worried about those offensive struggles. I think he'll turn that around. Plus, we need to look at the roster and how that's going to improve. And I think it's going to emulate a lot more of what we saw in that season where he was shooting really well. The biggest thing is that this year, the Thunder are going to have much, much better spacing. It's still not going to be phenomenal, especially when we look at some of the guys on the bench. But in terms of some of the talent that they brought in, the, the spacing is going to be so much better. Mainly Chet Holmgren, the second overall pick. I think that what he brings to the table is going to benefit Shea in so many different ways. Namely, like I said, spacing wise, Chet is a knockdown three point shooter. He's a guy that can hit threes pretty consistently, although he didn't shoot them in volume at Gonzaga. He shot really well from there. We saw it in the summer league too, whether he was creating his own three point shot. And there were a lot of times where he was hitting some really tough threes. Imagine how many threes he'll knock down when he has Shea and Giddy passing him the ball. He's going to be phenomenal from three this upcoming season and providing that floor spacing at the 
big man position is huge. Guys are going to have to respect his game a lot. Additionally, he's a vertical threat, which is something that I've been dying to see Shea get the chance to play with because he hasn't really played with one since Steven Adams, if you consider him a vertical threat. Now you've got Chet Holmgren, who has an insane wingspan, is a real seven footer and a guy that can go up and catch lobs at ridiculous angles and throw them down. And having a guy like that, that you can run pick and pop with or pick and roll is not only going to make Shea's game a lot easier scoring wise because they've got to worry about Chet potentially on the lob or spacing the floor popping out for three. You also have to worry about Shea's assist numbers also going up, having a guy that he can lob to and a guy that's going to knock down three. So Chet is going to open up the game a lot offensively and defensively too. He can block shots and grab boards to end possessions, giving more Shea or giving Shea more transition opportunities. And he's a player that excels in transition, one of the best attackers of the basket at the guard position. And just all around, Chet is another shot creator that can give Shea some more off-ball opportunities to shoot some catch and shoot threes, which he shot really well this past season. Season. Additionally, we drafted Jalen Williams, that's J-A-L-E-N, because we drafted two of them, who is a guard out of Santa Clara, and he shot 40% from three in college, including 44.3% on catch and shoot threes, which is incredible. It was one of the best numbers in college basketball, and he shot them in volume. We saw it in Summer League 2 that it's something that's going to carry over. Additionally, he's a great cutter, which is going to give Shea a lot more opportunities too. He's a guy that can go up and catch lobs with a 7-2 wingspan at the guard position, which is absolutely absurd. He can go up and catch lobs. He's hyper-athletic, and he's just another guy that when Shea attacks the basket or starts to drive, if the double team comes over, he can dish off to him, forcing teams to have to play Shea more single coverage because he faced a ton of doubles this past season. He was one of the most double teamed players in the entire league. We're also looking for improvement from guys like Trey Mann, who did shoot 36% from three. Just to see him do that same number on more volume would be huge. And Lou Dort, who shot 33% from three this past season, but he hit 38.8% of his threes over his last 15 games of this past season, showing that he is capable of catching fire at some points. And so if Dort shoots more like that, he doesn't have to shoot 39%, but if he can shoot around 34, 35%, even 36% consistently, it's going to do a lot for Shea too. We've got Jeremiah Robinson Earl who shoots 35.2% from three. We've got a lot of guys with a ton of three-point shooting potential. It's just about finding that consistency amongst young players. Plus, the Thunder just hired Chip Engeland from the San Antonio Spurs, who is widely considered to be one of the best shooting coaches in the world, which is huge for guys like Lou Dort, Shea, Poku, Baisley, and Josh Giddy, who is a guy that him and Shea have now had a full season to build some chemistry together. So this upcoming season, I expect them to gel better together you know, figuring out who's going to handle the ball at one time. And when Giddy, you know, gets more reps and hopefully improves those shooting numbers a bit, maybe working with Chip, or it's clear that shooting has been what Giddy's mostly been working on this offseason over the last three, four, whatever months it's been since the Thunder got eliminated. It's something that he's clearly working on. And so if his number continues to rise, that would be huge for Shea as well. Uh, we've also got the fact that Shea is one of the most efficient drivers in the entire league. There are very few players in the league, in fact, almost none, that get to the basket the way Shea does and finishes. He's been close to the top of the league in paint touches amongst guards the past two seasons, so spacing is huge for his game. And the fact that it's even getting a little bit better bringing in Chet, J-Dub, and potential guys having improvement like Dort, Trey Mann, Giddy, guys like that... Any spacing improvement is just going to exponentially increase Shea's opportunity to get to the basket as well as just make his life easier, preventing double teams and allowing him to get better lanes. Not that it matters because Shea's usually just going to finish over whoever's there. Additionally, this is Shea's first full offseason since coming to the Oklahoma City Thunder. In his first year here, he got traded mid-offseason. The next year, he had a pandemic-shortened offseason. Then he was rehabbing his injury this past offseason. And now, he finally has a full offseason to get better and improve and work with the team. The fact that he hasn't had one of those yet, and yet he has still improved the way that he has, it speaks volumes about how good Shea is. The fact that he now has a full and complete offseason season where he is healthy. We saw what he was doing with Team Canada, which if y'all didn't see, he was dominating in international competition a few weeks ago. He looks like he's ready to come in and prove to the world how good he is. He's been working nonstop, posting a ton of workout videos, a lot of strength training, just trying to get better, ready for the season. And I think it's all going to pay off. So the 
factors of better spacing, him having a full off season, the fact that Shea just continues to get better every year. I think Shea is in, like I said, for the best individual season of his career. If I had to make a prediction, I think that Shea is going to average around 25.2 points per game, five and a half rebounds, and right around six, 6.1, 6.2 assists is the numbers I'll go with. And I think shooting wise, he'll shoot about 47% from the field, 36% from three and 81% from the line, because that's been his shooting split at the line for pretty much his entire career. I think he's going to be a first time all-star all NBA. I won't go that far because I still think the Thunder are a year away from making the playoffs. I think that we're going to be right around that 12, 11, 13 ish seed range in the Western conference. So I don't think we make the play in, but who knows if Shea really is going to have the season that I think he's capable of. If Chet comes in and makes a big impact, if some of the other young players make a jump, then who knows? Maybe Shea goes out, leads this team to a play in berth and makes a case for all NBA. It's really tough. There's a ton of great guards in the league. So he might still have a year away because of the lack of team success, but it's Shea Gilgis Alexander. I have super high hopes for him and who knows? Maybe he he goes up, has an all NBA season, but at the very least, he's going to prove a lot of doubters wrong this year. So that's my preview of Shea's upcoming season. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think I'm biased, which I can answer? Yes, I am. But I also think that I'm being decently realistic. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. What numbers do you think Shea could put up this upcoming year? And like I said, let me know in the comment section below if there are any other players that you'd like to see a preview of, whether I talk about how I think they're going to fit with the team, the numbers that they can put up, or just where I foresee them going this upcoming season. I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.